Hello and welcome back to Pillars. It is time to enter Ashen Ma. This is where Eotas went. We can't go anywhere. We did all the missions we can. And uh, actually the party is at level 20. So that's max level. So we can't get any higher than this. We can only find better gear. So I imagine that uh, the game is coming to a close. Perhaps not right now, but soon. <clears throat> Thick smoke, black as death, blooms from the peak of a rumbling volcano, the largest in the chain of uh, mountains that makes up Magran's Thief. A serrated fissure gapes in the mountainside, deep and dark but intermittently lit by a red hot glow. The cavernous opening is too narrow for the Defiant to sail through. The skiff always. The squiff says tumultuously in the superheated water the closer you row to the cave's cracked opening. Lava burbles down the mountainside, scorching rivers that disappear into the dark blue sea. Inside the rock face, the sound of churning magma grows louder and the air warms around you, beating sweat along your brow. Okay, so this place is pretty hot. Um, <laughs> we'll see. So what is Eotas up to? After all this time, I just don't know. Eotas has a plan, but what that plan is... This where Gon stormed through? At least the docks are still intact. Angry troll? It's a pet? Okay. Though Ashen, the skin of this dead giant remains hot to the touch. Okay. That doesn't really mean anything. Because this place is rather hot. Well, no welcome's better than a bad one. The burned remains of these prisoners wear the tether tethers of sailors. Garb. Huh, okay. Leave it to me. Primal fame. <clears throat> Slumped against the stones of the bridge, a giant clutches at his bastion chest. It's a mass of sinew and blackened iron bones, fiery blood uh, flickering between his splayed fingers. Thickly rasping a breath, the warrior lifts his heated gaze to your face. Extinguished or crushed, us all, defiler. He struggles to speak. The agony of a slow death blazes through the scrolls in his skin, shrouding him with a veil of fire. You're a fire giant, an elemental servant of Magran, aren't, aren't you? You are not mistaken. Yep. I am but one of Margarine's elite champions, birthed from her flames, soon reunited in glory. What happened to you? Damned reaper of souls and god of lies, Margarine's most foul enemy. I need to get to Eotas. Servants of the Defiler God. Damn you. I didn't say I was serving him. Mercy killed by administration of poison. Drink this and rest easy. He closes his ember hot eyes, a relief sigh rushing from his chest as you brew up and then tip a vial of poison to his lips. The icy, slushy mixture takes effect immediately, dousing his flames with a sweep of hoarfrost through his veins. It leaves his face cold and ashen and dead. Wow. Well, that was worth doing, even if we got nothing in return. A right good action you did there, Captain. Here's hoping we don't be ending up needing that poison, though. Huh. Sadi so swigs her lantern back and forth over the warrior's body until a large, shimmering cloud of essence shifts up and into her lantern. She grunts, the lantern dipping in her hand as if heavier momentarily. 
Okay. Let's get in here. I didn't really sure. expect a... Uh, like a building. But I heard volcano. Um, okay, maybe this place doesn't really have a lot of in in infrastructure. But uh, we do have a temple here. To Magran. And a quite fancy one, apparently. Nothing good comes from this much quiet. It's only fine. What value is a fine? Hammer at this point. Easy breezy, wet tent. Reckon this is what happens when you try to keep a god from enacting his plans. Ishi. Now is the chance if you had any second thoughts about this place. Is she do you have auto AI on? Yeah. Hey! Trespasses in the goddesses more? But how? It says the giant warrior hawks. Her thick muscles twitch. Red markings glowing hotly against her ashen skin. You must seek to follow in your defiler god's footsteps. You will not, for I will smite you where you stand. Bellowing, she hefts a massive sword overhead. But a second giant slams the haft of his iron staff into the warrior's hard-muscled stomach, abruptly halting her attack. Old Saga, I would speak to this filthy minion of the wretched god Aethys. Oh come on! What kind of t what kind of uh? Conversation we can have now. Before you char her bones to dust. The god in that statue bid me to meet him here. I've come to speak with him. I'm no friend of Eotas. He stole a piece of my soul and I mean to get it back. Ha! You think to confront an embodied god? Then you are either powerful beyond comprehension or as much a fool. He cans his head. Broad fingers scratching at the rivers of his helm. Yet you imply you do not serve him. Nope. The first giant's grip turns white knuckled on the hilt of her sword. Her muscles strain and the metal quivers in her hand. Rakir, move! We cannot allow these intruders to live. What the, f the hell? With a shrug of his meaty shoulders, he steps aside. Eotas has consumed your warrior's very souls, but I faced him before and I'm still standing. Yep, how about that? Shoulders taut with tension, the warrior eyes uh, the strewn corpses of his fellow Rata Ratanat arms. They lie dried. They lie like... No, <clears throat> they lie dried like husks, siphoned off their souls. He places a hand out to hold the warrior back. He studies you intently. You would face us in battle rather than flee. I like your metal. Kethu does not cower before Markwan's greatest warriors. We have not yet defeated the embodied god. But that does not mean we won't. The Jotagar is readying another assault from within the jagged keep as we speak. I will permit you to scamper closer to God's face, if you believe you can survive. Scurry deeper into the moor. But know that my brethren may squash you. A worry Magrum plans to erupt this volcano. If you stay, you'll die. He hefts his meaty shoulders in a heavy shrug. Our duty is foremost to Margaret. We guard the moor to its fiery end. You plan to attack Eotas? First, we recover the wounded and their weapons. Drag them into the jagged keep. After that, we will join the Drottiger and the others in a secondary assault. Yes. And then we will kill a god. I got it. Second, help me with the bodies, but this time gentle your grip. It can't be helped, Rakir. These fallen are brittle. Well, I can kill them. But at this point, I suppose we can use any help we can get. They always attacked me before, but now I guess we are friends. Not really friends, but United against the Otas. I thought the volcanoes in these parts were dormant. I don't think I can pull that up. I guess you thought wrong. So, with gone now. Jack Keep, 
Lair of the Ancients. Scallywags. What the hell is this? Let's see how it works out. Is it an overkill? Oh, they immune to flames. Oh, that was silly. Let's do that. See that beauty of it? Let's blow up the flame bat. No, we missed. We're killing Yashiza now. Yashiza is gonna die. That was a weird fight. So, uh, we can choose either of those. Uh, Lair of the Ancients or Jagged Keep. So apparently he's in the Jagged Keep, but we may be able to check out the Lair of the Ancients, who knows. Magmos. Yeah, convert them all. Still got it. This place is rather small. You wait in fire. I'm thinking this place ain't gonna hold up much longer. What say we hurry, Watcher? I don't like oh, this, Captain. I think that were a person, Cap. <laughs> Reach for the soul. A haze of soul essence uh, sifts up like smoke from a corpse scored with heavy claw marks. Oddly, no blood pools beneath the body. The wounds have been cauterized. Hot to the touch, the essence slowly wafts through your fingers. Then you are tumbling down into the feverish sensation of a soul read. You're a great champion, a Goliath among giants, your chest tight with pride. And now something darker, a strange dread. It flickers inside of you, like the fires of a walking forge because you know you are too s you are soon to be tempered as you stare down upon the distant god the defiler your brothers and sisters died to, to defeat but could not who now gluts on the address pyre striking plans against magran the iron chains that suspend the bridge beneath your feet drip blood and sweat weeping the maw spans below, bettered by the invader, the jagged keep now ever more apt in name. He cut a path to the spire and could not be stopped. He drank deeply from so many of you. The Brantus watches beside you. A Ratun are led by their high priestess, the Bratis, one of the few among the sect of warriors with the ability to hear Magran's voice. She is fierce and will know what to do. She can hear Magran with, within the flames. Without further delay, she hastens you into the dragon's lair. She will call the beast and it will ride with you into the assault. Inside the cavern is dark and shimmering. The Bratis rushes ahead of you. Despite your bark warning, something is wrong. The heat roars against your skin. A whisper of death, dangerous rather than comfort comforting. The defiler god has riled the dragon. The Bratis has raised her torque high as if to call it a dragon. The light of it sheening 
her helm in the darkness. She is thundering. The time has come, Jada. Submit to Magran's will, and the walls rumble from a sudden earthquake. No, from the beast's hung laughter. A shadow looms to your left, then scolding claws punch through your skin. Rest now, warrior. Your soul is safe with me. Sote, holy crap. I am so happy you you stopped that. That was that was that was getting out of hand. Like hell in the stories Uncle Andrew. So tell me to Damn. make me behave as a child. What is this? Seems like a dead end. What the hell is that? I think we just found ourselves a uh, easy kill. Beauty. A creature of smoke and scales, embers and talons, looms up from the darkness. Her back and ribs gleam uh, luridly, red as the lake of fire that taps at her feet. She hisses, the sound like rocks grating together in her throat. And though her peeled back lips form no words, you understand. Who comes now to stoke the flames of chaos further? Jedefer lost the ancient. Have I not yet feasted enough? I suppose I can make room for another. Just realized how lucky we are to have never run across a sewer dragon. <laughs> Don't let this be fool on your lass. Ain't nothing but uh, fur and bones. A dry laugh crackles from the dragon's thick scaled throat. The Ratun summoned you, so you attacked them? Attack me, beast, and it'll be the last thing you do. Return to the weird creature. The dragon's rumbling laughter rattles the cavern's floor. Her wings quiver as she flexes to attack. Let's take her out. She's immune to a lot of things. Question is, can we take her out? Okay, let's do some missiles. She's probably new to fire, right? Yes. That's why we gotta do some missiles. Yep. What? You died? How did you die, Seraphim? Well, that's garbage. Oh, we, we only waiting? Resting is not allowed in this area? Exceptional one-handed blade. <laughs> that deals more shock damage. And this is basically a crit paste one, right? It looks good. Whatever. Ajamut's stalking cloak, perception and stealth, plus 15 damage to weapon attacks made from stealth, plus 10 accuracy to weapon attacks made from stealth, attacks made from stealth stun the target. Okay, so this is like a stealthy rogue. Uh, cla cloak. <clears throat> the closer you near to the dimly lit essence that smolders over the Ratun's burned corpse, the stronger you feel the soul's flickering confusion and grief. Ashen, crooked fingers clutch a still flaming torque, grasping the relic tightly even in death. Pry the torque from the priest's hand? Reach for the soul. Rather than falling face forward into a vision of the Ratun's final memory, her last thoughts scream through your mind in a jumble of disjointed words and disbelief. I am burning! I am burning! I am burning! 
Sati! No! Sati, stop this! Not for Mother Margaret! I should have listened when she said nothing! But I was willing to die to reach the Everflame, to sacrifice them and everything to ash, to vanquish the Defiler. And I am burning, but not in the flame. Not with honor and eternity, but for a moment. I am disgraced. That sounds very troublesome. Okay. Disconcerning. I can't say I care, though. Dig deeper into her final memory. Pull back from the memory. I am burning. Who? Who will lay the torque before the mother to fire? I'm the taking way? the po torque. Who? Shut the fuck up. Rest easy now, priestess. Yeah. I'll harvest your soul and your torment. No, 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 no. Okay. Whew. Okay. We had to take it from her anyway. That was the only way. Damn. Do you really want your... Not even your last words, but... Like... Your words to be after you died? I am burning? But not like just say it like once. Like, okay, sure. You burn to death. But no. Just screaming I am burning. Come on. Okay, Otas, we're ready. Oh, is he there? I can't tell. It looks a bit weird. You spend your whole life thinking you're a giant. And one day that fella shows up at your fortress. That was awfully profound. It seems like he's just touching the pillar now. We don't, we don't see him properly. We see enough to know what the hell is going on. Let's go into the jagged keep. The plan is still to take down Eotas. And he actually gave us a, a clue how to defeat him by by starving him out. Apparently, he needs the luminous Adra. Hey, what's going on here? Peek that spotting you. The strapping warrior slams her shield against the floor, rattling the stones beneath your feet. Scurriers in my keep. Make ready to be crushed. Vermin of Aeothas. Um, look here. I recovered this from your fallen Bratis. You felled her and her dragon? Yep. Fires take you. Muscles flexing, she hefts her weapon to strike. What? You will find no mercy in my flames. I thought the warrior, like yourself, could appreciate. Oh, come on. Such a feat. Apparently not. Tell me we aren't gonna fight them all at once. Better yet. What if we didn't fight them at all? Well, that's probably not gonna happen. Oh boy. We got them this just so crazy. Chain lightning. I guess that's fine. Do that. What? Do we have something here? Lightning bomb? But I don't use bombs. Some key. Got someone? Let's go. Right on target. Damn. Okay, uh, seems like this could be a dead end. 
Or else I'm just not seeing something. I think that's a dead end. Ratoon Hall of Warriors. I guess there were some warriors there. But we were quite ready to deal with them. Superb flail. It's mine now. Wait, what did we find? Seemed just the basic one, so doesn't matter. Okay, secret door. It's more like it. Yeah, we can't go there. I don't see where the traps are. One blown the lock. Easy breezy. Dexterity, explosives, plus one arcana, all evocation power levels. Oh, that could be good. Let's give it to her. Let's see. Oh, that's complete garbage. So that wasn't much of a choice really that that's that's a huge improvement arcana evocation wow. power levels really that's gonna be uh, a big deal okay we can actually rest i just get rid of the one injury we have even one injury could be oh well i guess zero injury is better than one injury not like i really expect to To run into a very tough fight. But maybe actually that's what I should be expecting because we're about to meet with the Otas, I suppose. Still got it. How much damage are we doing now? A lot. Oh, we got interrupted. That's bad. Interrupted again. You guys just stop that. What's your AI? I think whatever has to be first is that. Do you have concentration? No. Get spirit shield. Yeah, I think that's. That's kind of how we go anyway. I just lowered the uh, the frequency. Well, I have it, it checks every five seconds now instead of every ten. Yeah. Kill him! Blow them all up! We got interrupted again. We got interrupted again. This is so bullshit. Everything gets interrupted. Not like it really matters. We got interrupted again. Yeah, whatever. Right, I suppose it doesn't necessarily help that uh, she's melee. If she stayed back, then it, it would be easier to cast. But ranged weapons are not that good. Nah. Supposing this volcano blows, what are the odds any of us but gone survives it? Too late to... 
When the warlord spots you, his shoulders stiffen and he reaches for the mace strapped to his back. You are a bold one to attack us in our own seat of power. Uh, we don't have time for this. I need to get to Eta's quickly. And to do that without my permission, you would need to triumph over the Rithu. Is your pride worth more than the lives of your warriors? Can you afford to lose any more right now? We don't have time to talk about this. There's no reason for us to fight. We can be aid of each other instead. He scrubs a hand over the front of his helm, apparently weighing your words. I can see to your point. For the time being, Aethys deserves death, not words. The Defiler God has brought war to Ash and Moor in revenge against Margaret and her Athum. What is your relation to Aethys if not to act with him against Margaret? I couldn't care less if Aethys nuffs every one of you. I need only to discern. His aim within Deathfire? Bastard, the bastard crossed me and I'm going to make him pay for it. Your blood boils with anger. You like Good. that? That was such a non-answer. Then you two have cause against Aethys, as we do. I basically said I don't like him. I'm like, whoa, yeah, hell yeah. Damn right, kill Aethys. We are prepared to assault Aethys at the base of the moor. The shrine will lower us to the sacred Ardra pillar, where the embodied god now gluts himself. Let me through. I speak with Eotas and convince him to leave this place. Even if I believed you, I cannot do such a thing. He shakes his head, his eyes burn, fiercely intent. We guard the sacred depths of the moor. None may freely enter. You see, we might have a problem here because by running with you guys, you kind of—I'm kind of limiting my options. Thus, the shrine lies dormant, locked without the talk of Bethacton. Our high priestess, the Brenthis, is the talk's rightful bearer, but she has yet to return to the keep. I got the torch. I heard shouts of your triumph preceding you. It would seem you are unparalleled among your kind, and mine. You are without the Brenthis. So I must assume she has returned to the Ever Flame. What became of the Ancient? Draw the Fairless. Triumph will be nigh impossible without her. She's dead. W uh, what makes you think something happened to her? <laughs> yeah, that's a spirit. Oh, where to begin? <clears throat> Captain? The warlord tilts his head as if considering the true meaning to your companion's reaction, growing distrustful. He tightens his grip on his mace. You will answer me, Kith, without trickery or lies. Who's that? Impossible! A flame as bright as the ancients cannot be so easily extinguished. Her soul was drained just like the Ratun. Where it does kiss you? I killed her. I was a fool for trusting you! <laughs> have you any fathom of the doom you have wrought us? You shall explain, or forthwith perish on the end of my mace! The beast killed the Brantus and your warriors, I avenged them. The ancients attacked them? Yep. The dragon could be fierce and unrelenting indeed, but I trusted the Brenthus's power would command the beast. How disturbing and unfortunate. She would have been our mighty ally against Aethus. Not so much. We've no choice. Despite the odds, we'll attack without either strength. If this is to be our last stand, we must prepare ourselves, either for victory or for sacrifice. Lest Margarin forsake us for our failures. You've earned the right to fire shrine with the talk of the other flame. But we cannot join you as yet in facing the defiler. God damn it, you talk a lot. I said I was in a hurry. Are you kidding me? I can see the fury burning in her eyes. Let's see. What? You stand before the shrine of Magran, goddess of flame and war. Lifting your eyes, fiery modes begin to streak across your vision as you stare into the imposing cast of her likeness. For the span of a single breath, everything falls eerily silent. 
The ratoon behind you fade away, flames to either side of you flicker higher, dancing without sound, but the heat is real, looking at your skin. That metal groans as Magran's statue bends her head to you in greeting. Water. The time does not allow for niceties. Her words flow like lava from her lips, like the trails that burble hotly from her eyes. Even now, Aethys gains strength from the spire. What progress have you to report? Unbelievable! Gods and their progress reports. The Bratun are preparing a final assault against the Otas. Then they will burn to ash and return to the mud kiln from whence they came. She leans forward, the copper of her corded arms gleaming from the blustering flames. She tucks her sword free from her plate, and the entire shrine shudders with heat. Presently I shall erupt this volcano, and with it consume Aethys. I suggest you retreat if you at all value your mortal form. Don't you care about the Ratoon? I formed the Ratoon to serve, to ward against Kith in order to safeguard Ukaizo. Now they have served me. Their sacrifice is not without honor, as yours too will be. Fare thee on, Watcher. My condolences should you die. An avatar of the goddess flashes over the imposing statue before you. As the image fades, her absence leaves the shrine cold and deathly silent. Interact with the shrine? The statue of Magran towers above you, bloodied and battle ready. The goddess clutches both sword and shield. At the base of the statue, a, rectang a rectangular, iron slatted altar rests between two unlit bra braziers. Place the torque on the altar. The braziers on either side of the altar flare to life, red hot flames shooting high before settling into a steadier, softer burn with the within the balls. Lava eddies beneath iron grating in the floor, heating the soles of your feet, while the statue herself seems to wake, metal groaning, rasping, as the shrine moves. Hope you guys are ready! We're going down to fight them! Alright, not sure what I did. Are we going down? A statue of Magran. And I where do you read that? Descend descend into the uh, depths of Ashen Ma. With a squeal of metal against metal, the entire floor drops, a stomach lurching five feet. Chains clang like a uh, the toll of a bell as they catch, pounding against the time worn gears. Then the shrine begins steadily lowering to the Maw. As the shrine cranks lower into the Maw, Eotas' colossal Adra carved dome. Neck and shoulders slowly emerge into view. This close, the god rises up like a mountain, larger than you ever remember seeing him. Energy vibrates from his massive body, and a cacophony of mutterings and shouts from the souls whirling. Within it slams into you, nearly knocking you from your feet. Not really sure what's our plan is to take him out, but... Can we just really fight him? The regular way? Oh, did we go down? Oi, he'd be big from down here too. Have you ever seen anything so awe-inspiring? Watcher, I wasn't sure you'd make it. But there is enough of you in me to grasp that you had a better chance than most. How did we defeat you? Some would say it's because you have a strong soul. Great deeds come easily to one so spiritually blessed. Or have you become great because of what has been thrust upon you, Watcher of Cadnua, Herald of Bereth, Hound of Aethys? Oh my god, you, you, you really, I mean, I'm, this can't, oh. I see you, Shoti. I am glad that we could meet, even if it is under quite unpleasant circumstances. This is really happening, right? Gone. Your humble priestess is before you. Please, tell me what you require of me. 
How do I save more lost souls than I can carry in one lifetime? I know that you have undertaken a noble mission. But I will tell you what I told the Watcher. You need not fear for the lost souls of this world. As for you, Watcher, why is it you believe you have made it this far? It's in my soul now. Each of us simply does the best we can. My trials have made me who I am. I've had enough of this. Attack! I've had enough of this. I followed you into this damn volcano to get some answers. And okay. Each of us simply does the best we can. You have done much in this life. It's true. But if it weren't for your past with Theos, with Eovara, you never would have come down this path. But you have come a great distance for answers. What would you ask of me, Watcher? I don't know, take a nap in the lava? That we have! And I got a request! <laughs> Down here! God! Look how full my lantern is! I've been harvesting day and night for you, my god! Shut the lantern rattling. Sickle gripped so tight her knuckles are white. She waves her arms over her head as she shouts. What? Now? Now we have a narrator? Okay. Okay, sure. Soti, come on! Act cool. My dear Shodi, I do not mean to diminish your presence here. But this is a question that the Watcher needs to answer. She alone was tasked with pursuing me. The gods have placed her in this fire. It is only right that we speak together now. Alright. Can you atone for all the damage you've done? No. Not now. Not in your lifetime. Perhaps in 100 generations, the books and tongues of Kith will forget the name Aethys. A penance paid in full, noted by none. That would be my absolution. You're just gonna wait for us to forget what you did? That's your penance? <laughs> the stands in a broad posture. The one he so often takes when placing himself between friend and foe. His neck is sharply craned to meet the unblinking stare of his god. How about you start by giving back the souls you took? Or maybe by apologizing to every one of your followers, especially the ones that died for you. The molten rock of Magrin's teeth gleams bright orange in his eyes, and he looks like a man overtaken by a furious spirit. You owe this watcher here. You owe my brother, Woden. You owe a Lava Mazzy's boy, and every last one of us that ever followed you. And you owe me. I never asked you for much, but you owe me better than what you're given. I cannot atone for my mistakes with words alone, Adair. I know this now. It is why I began this journey and why I must move on. But you have come here for other answers. Why I have returned. Where I am going. Am I answering to you or to Bereth? Not Bereth. I need to know. It seems someone else needs to know. One who has held me to the flames once before. Margren is prepared to take drastic measures to stop you. Margren fears what I will do. Just as she feared what I would do in the Deerwood. But this time. There is no power on Aora or in all of Hell to stop me. Understand that what I'm saying is neither a boast nor a challenge. It is the clearest statement of truth I can give you. Give Bereth, in the hopes of dissuading you from taking actions that may harm others. So what are you going to do? Force gods and mortals alike to open their eyes to one another. It seems my sister does not like the sound of that. Can you be more specific? What are you trying to do? I want to return the gods to our original purpose. And to allow mortals to worship us, or ignore us, for what we are, not what we pretend to be. That's still pretty vague. So we guess, uh, shortly, for once too stunned to blurt out a response, her eyes are wild, with too much white showing. When she glances from Eotas to you. Whatever you're doing, there's gotta be a better way. When I entered Widewin, I did so with the intention of illuminating the history of Angwith. 
I wanted to show all the nations of the Eastern Reach the machines we had used to create ourselves. How we had hidden our true nature from mortals for millennia. But even if I had succeeded, my words would have been easy to deny. Belief creates the foundation upon which a mind's reality is built. Some minds can never let go of that foundation. They would rather hold tight to the world in their mind than accept what they're being told. If that's so, what are you doing this time that will make a difference? Why does it even matter? Why is it so important that the mortals know that the gods came from the Inguitans? We began with a dream that if we provided guidance to mortals, each generation of souls would grow stronger. And if the souls grew stronger, societies would become better, moving ever closer to achieving the potential we believed all mortals have within them. Over 2,000 years have passed. Hundreds of generations have been born, lived, and died. If the world has improved under our guidance, mortals should be prepared to understand the truth. If they have not improved after all of this time, then we have utterly failed in our aims, and there should be a reckoning of our faults. The time has come for a new covenant between gods and mortals. One forged in the light of truth and understanding between our kind. I will leave this place and go to the lost city the Huana call Ukaizo. It is there that all souls pass through the machines of the gods. Where all souls pass into the beyond, before beginning their next life. When I reach that place, I will find our great machines and tear them to pieces. I will smash the great wheel until the lights of hell all gutter and die. And when my work is done, I will leave this world forever. More destruction. You're tearing the whole world apart because you can't make peace among yourselves. Adair, there will never be peace among mortals, so long as they are unwittingly manipulated by the gods. The divine enslavement that Woodaka reveres perpetuates ignorance, chaos, and violence across the world. I only wish to destroy the darkness that surrounds the gods, that you may better see us for what we are. And what is that? That's insane. I hope my ground explodes two volcanoes on you for good measure. What? Both gods and mortals alike rely on the wheel. We depend on it for the souls that give us power. Mortals depend on it for the lives of future generations. Breaking it will force all of us to face the truth. We will fail together or move forward together. Either ending is preferable to the cycle we still find ourselves in. So, Looks like we gotta Go get out of here. Before it's too late, you gotta take the souls I harvested for you. So the priestess thrusts her light pulsing lantern outward, as if waiting for Aethys to take it from her. Seriously, you wanna feed the souls to Aethys? <sighs> they are not for me to take. Shodi, you are their guardian now. You are their protector. You have taken responsibility for them, and only you can decide their fate. Once again, the gods have put you in a precarious position, Watcher. Considering all the troubles I have put you through, the least I can do is protect you from the wrath Margren has intended for me. It doesn't make us even, you know. Perhaps I will have another opportunity to make amends. Until then, this will have to do. Brace yourself, Watcher. Guys and gals, we are literally being touched by the hand of God right now. Salty. Despite herself, Shodi squeals. Trembling, she sways on her feet as if she might faint. Hey, Aethys. We're not done here. You and I, we're not finished. Don't think you can just move me aside like all the rest. Maybe you can't be stopped. 
But on behalf of everyone you trampled, betrayed, and ignored, I'll be coming to see you again. <laughs> Adair spits. In the surging heat, it never reaches the ground. Perhaps we will meet again, Adair. Until then, take care of the Watcher. Okay. So we need to go. great hand floats away from the luminous Audra pillar. As it pulls back, for a brief moment, you see a golden tether flash into existence between the pillar and the great titan's back. When the Audra fingers gently cradle you, there is first a sensation of warmth, but it is followed by a harsh splitting of consciousness. Your awareness vacillates erratically between the physical world and the spiritual dimension of Aethys's body. Your soul glides amid the many trapped with Aethys. As your brilliant form passes by them, they call and reach out for help. Below Aethys's body, the volcano erupts. Molten rock rushes over the great Audra body, but does not slow its movement. Rathun rush to higher ground, but cannot outpace the lava which overwhelms and consumes them as it rises. Your attention returns to the heart of Aethys's body. Deep within the whirling masses of souls, you again sense your own presence, the fragment that was taken from you. This time, you reach out to it as it reaches out to you. You meet somewhere in the great mass of Audra, the rest of the souls fading at the edge of your awareness. We are together again. Are you ready to be together again? Yes. It's about damn time. Are you certain? Since we've parted, you've become someone else. And I have become myself. Huh. When we join, we won't be ourselves anymore. Your senses yank back to your body, still in Aethys's hand. There is light, sunlight. He has emerged from Ashen Maw, the rim of the volcano and the great keep of the Rathun collapsing behind him. The Audra is barely visible through the thick lava covering his body. And still, he moves. The ocean is gone, water sucked away leaving only the bare seabed glistening in an ominous silence. You summon the strength to turn your head. Through the cracks in the great god's fingers, you see a wall of water, taller than Nekataka, taller than Aethys, as tall as the moon. It comes with the rumbling of a terrible stampede. The wave slams into Aethys. His hand closes, protecting you from the devastation. Somewhere in your mind, you hear Andra screaming. You are back inside him. Back with yourself. Are you still the same Watcher who returned the lost souls of the Deerwood to the wheel? The soul observes you, waiting. I am. I am, and I will do everything I can to save these poor souls before I am done. I am, and I hope to return these souls to the wheel before I'm done. Okay. Wow. Not, not sure what to say about this. Am I the same person? I am, and I will do everything I can to save these poor souls before I am done. Not too passionate. I am and I hope to return these souls to the wheel before I'm done. I just say I'm the I am. Like I guess. Yes, I am. Good. Then this should be easy. Let's see. You feel cool air. Seawater. The back of your mind pulls your attention back to your body. Aethys stands amid the now calm waves. Kraken futilely clinging to his limbs as he gingerly sets down your ship with one hand. He carefully opens his other, setting your body on the deck. As your head comes to rest, 
Your vision rocks forward, pulled back into the Audra, back to your soul. Some of us is lost to him. Fragments and the empty spaces between them. They will always be a part of him. But we are still us. And it's time for us to go. Together. Together. This is weird. So basically, that part of my soul is who I was in the first game. And now it's gonna be united with who I become since then, plus who I was. But it's technically true that we are not exactly the same. You change, we changed. I just go together. The soul rushes toward you, flying into you with ferocious speed. You are thrust back through the Audra, out of the palm of Aethys's hand, back into your body. You can feel the sensation of your skin, the warmth of the Audra, but you are not fully in control. The other soul struggles to reach the surface of the body's consciousness, but you pull it down. Entangled, you float in a dark, boundless expanse. The more you fight each other, the closer you become, until somehow, impossibly, every piece of you is touching every piece of them. Through the distant window of your eyes, you see Aethys push slowly against your ship. Though his touch is light, it is still the touch of a god. The ship lurches, rapidly tearing across the water southward. His hand pulls away from your ship's wake, his body straightening, towering overhead. The volcanic rock, now cooled and gently steaming, sloughs from his body as he moves. The Audra beneath is still immaculate, unmarred. He watches you depart, and you hear a voice in your mind as you sink deeper into the blackness of sleep. Tell them what you have witnessed, Watcher. Tell them what is coming. The windows of your eyes retreat into the distance. The fragment of your soul is so close to you in the darkness that you can't tell if its thoughts are separate from your own. Aethys is going to Ukaizo? Yes. He's going to stop the wheel? He's going to stop the wheel. Question is, what do we do about it? Aethys is going to Ukaizo. Yes. Aethys is going to Ukaizo. He's going to stop the wheel. The words repeat in your mind until they become an incessant, meaningless mantra. Involuntary meditation in the emptiness of your unconscious. When the words finally dissolve and become part of the darkness, you see a pinpoint of light. You no longer sense the other soul. No longer sense the person you were before Aethys touched you. You swim toward the light. As you come closer, the light becomes two blurry spots of radiance. You settle in behind your eyes and feel your lips already moving, mumbling. Around your body, you sense familiar scents and sounds, voices raised in shock and alarm. You take control of your mouth, opening it wide and drawing a great breath. Okay, that kind of left me a little bit speechless. So, what do we do? So, Eotas clearly believes that stopping the wheel, stopping how things happen, is worth any sacrifice, so to speak. And the gods are willing to go to extreme lengths. Basically, they are saying that stopping him is worth any sacrifice as well. 
pounding headache drags you most of the way back to your senses. Your vision blurs and an acrid taste fills your parched mouth. The details of the room slowly come into focus. The sounds of an ongoing deb debate, a distant echo. Are we simply going to wait? What if she never wakes up? Are those frilled collars stuffed in your ears? If the Watcher's mumblings are right, then Aethys is marching on Ukaizo. We have to move. He's seizing power from the very gods who betrayed him. Destroying the wheel to make sure they never come back. It's a coup, and we have to muster the strength to stop it. The unraveling of Kohopa from Tangaloa is our greatest test from the gods, I say. We must live to deserve the world they make for us. The assembled leaders turn their attention away from each other in a prolonged and thoughtful silence. At last you feel fully present and steady on your feet. The attention of the room abruptly shifts to you, filling the void with expectant whispers. I'm fine, not, not that any, uh, anyone asked. You bear witness to the work of the gods. It seems they are not finished with you yet. Oh, welcome back, Captain. If you're, if you're mm. wondering about the taste, Ishi was trying to feed you bugs while you were asleep. I appreciate that. Join our talks, I say. Rational discussion will gust away the ominous smoke rising from Ashen Maul. The dead fire is no stranger to cataclysm. We can survive by cleaving to a shared purpose. A greater good, Akira. For what else did the gods place us here? We who have ships and resources enough to make a difference. Castle glances around the room at the gathered parties, his brows climbing. What we need is brass. Rawatai has ships and cannons aplenty, but the only way I'm sending them is if... She breaks off at the boom of a door slamming open. Commotion echoes from the entrance hall. As everyone turns towards the noise, her hand strays to her gun. The sound of an approaching footsteps grows in volume as a courier scrambles into the throne room panting and glistening with sweat. His mouth opens and closes like a fish gasping desperately for breath. Ships have formed the blockade around Queen's birth. Their commander demands parley with Serpent's crown. What? B but what about our ships? I must get a message through to the captains. For what do our enemies paint a target on their hull? This is a stirring bid for my attention. Send word to my water shapers to drain the sea around the flagship. I would parley on better terms than this. My queen! They fly the colors of pirates! The Principi are... Well, what have we here? Oh, Aldous. I was wondering when you gotta show up. The motley sailors who don't hold the Juana guards at bay with drawn weapons take in some of the more opulent decorations with avid interest. The vampire separates out from the fold, sauntering boldly forward. Forgive me, lovesome. Boldly, but it looks like you're be. having a party. A rather fine one to which you didn't invite me. She winks, Sulonat uh, glinting in the light as she cocks her pistol high above uh, her head. You painted vagrants are a plague on my tribes. Why should I not hang you from the walls of my garden? You should be asking yourself how they got in here in the first place. Oh, I do love when they squabble. But I'm here for neither pleasantries nor entertainment. We've bigger fish to fry. Or should I say gods? Now, everyone, just calm down. I promise we won't fire on you at this time. Unless firstly provoked. That is, until whence we've safely absconded from the city back to the high seas. Then all bets are off again. I? Yes. Well, if you have a point, pirate, I suggest you reach it quickly. We're supposed to take a bunch of pirates at their word? Right you are. However... I'm here because I've got questions, ones that can't wait. And the lovesome watchers, the only one likely to answer them nicely. 
Uh, if we want to reach Ukaizo, we need every ship at our disposal. Ukaizo? What's the lost city of gold got to do with the god on a rampage? Altus is going to break the reincarnation cycle. Well, fuck, if that doesn't put things into perspective. But what's that even mean in the long run? Folks who die won't be coming back again. Their souls will be trapped in the in-between. Maybe not at first, but eventually Aura will be starved of life. This is all dark and foreboding sounding. But what's it mean for my soul? I mean, I like the idea of pirating throughout the great beyond as much as the next gal. But if, say, I got no awareness after I die, does it even matter what happens? Ak, of course you have no interest past that of your eyes and your stomach. Let us speak now of what can be done. Must be done. Watcher, you know best of all of us what our options are. Every cannon in the aura can slow him down. But, Watcher, you must have some solution. Some insight, at least. A weakness, or... We have to act quickly. Defending Okaizo is the highest priority. Our ships are fast and well-equipped. We could sail to the edge of Andra's Mortar. See if Aethys' passage opens a way through the storms. Of course, finding Ukaizo once we're through is another matter. I can sense Eotas and Ondra in Ondra's mortar. My, my soul calls out from inside him. Okay. That's so. You just might be able to save us. We speak of collectively sailing for Andra's Mortar, but this crown will not support any plan that involves a single outsider ship landing on the shores of Ukaizo. Can we just overthrow her? I swear, if there's gonna be a second playthrough, it's gonna it's gotta be not really start, but Well, it's gonna involve with Queen Vonkaz's death. It is for this moment that the gods test me. Anyone who seeks to cross Andra's mortar will learn that the gates of Ukaizo are the end of compromise with the Juana. Arguing like this is going to get us all killed or worse. But do you not see? Their attachment to this fanciful mythology outpaces all reason. They would risk everything, all for the sake of some misremembered past. Yeah. I think I'm getting the gist of it now. She rubs the barrel of her gun under her jaw thoughtfully. Then she crooks you a cunning grin. While these witless princocks go at each other's throats, we Principi will cut through the storms and plunder the city of gold. <laughs> what happens if uh, you kill every single one of these guys? I don't know. What kind of conversation you have here? Whatever Aeothus is seeking in those ruins, we'll find it. And then we'll sell it to the highest bidder. That, or me and mine will have front row seats to the end of the world. If the Juana cannot take back our beginning, then our end fast approaches. The gods will judge us by our devotion to Ukaizo. Are you going to guard it as closely as you've guarded your palace today? Ukaizo was yours once, and you lost it. Meanwhile, the storms that cover Andra's mortar plague Rauatai, too. We will help the Watchers stop Aethys. But we will not leave our country's future in soft hands. We hope the Watcher agrees. Watcher, there are two kinds of people in the Deadfire. Those who have called it home since time immemorial. And opportunists. With Ukaizo under our control, the Juana would restore order as it has not been seen since the days of our ancestors. Ak, order. And the only question is whether it will be the order of ignorance and tradition, or else of conquest. <laughs> Damn, no one likes Vonkaza. The secrets to be found in Ukaizo could elevate us all beyond the telling. I will not relinquish that dream so easily. Without so much as a final farewell, Aldis uh, tips her head and to her armed crew, and the pirates withdraw as swift as they arrive. Watcher, I say the time to play at freelancing is at an end. Any of us could get you to Ukaizo, but only one of us will stand by your side. 
Studying you carefully, one cousin nods and gestures for her attendance to clear the room. Let's speak, Watcher, while we are. Hoy Cap, Benjurira Tick. Shodi seems a right fine lass and all, but. Uh, well, she asked me to pick around in her forts. Told her I didn't see nothing. I bounced right off of her. But that were a lie. What do you see? Darkness, Cap, and little butt. Then fires make an ash of everything. He washes over you, and you find yourself a aboard the Defiant's main deck. Something unseen presses down upon you, and you bear the ship grown beneath you. Keep watching. You're alone, save for the corpses, Seraphim, Adair, Soti, Maya, and so many others. Their wide, unblinking eyes reflect the burning sky above, and the dark sea beneath you churns as if boiling. With a crash like thunder, the ship breaks apart, and you plunge into water that is either so cold it burns or so hot that it freezes you solid. The vision washes past, and you find yourself looking at the blue Orlan. That was unpleasant. I touched her mind for a second, but felt something pull me in and keep me trapped for what seemed like days. I ain't seen its like before. Sometimes old sorts get nightmares so that I can't bunk around them. But they usually ain't this flavor of apocalyptic. If it were you, what would you want to know? Honesty's always best. It's been my experience, Cap, that honesty's as like to bite you on the ass than not. If that be your thinking, though, I'll stow my instincts. So we need to make a choice. Either we go with the Royal Deathfire Company. Or the trading company, or the Juana, or or the pirates. I guess these are all options. But for now, this is a great time to take a break. So thanks for watching and see you next time.